remember saying um, ages ago when I first started this, these Wainwrights, this Wainwright adventure, that I wasn't going to let them take over my YouTube channel. And it has. It has. So I've not really thought about that up until now. Um, it feels like everything's been very fast since I started these Wainwrights. And the only reason that is, is because I'm so passionate in, uh, about it and I'm just proper into it. Like, So it wasn't really the plan. I did mean that when I said it, but... It's just happened. And I guess my videos have always just been like my journey, I suppose, wherever my photography and my adventures take me. So I don't know what I'm really trying to say. I wanted, I just want to make sure that you are enjoying it. The comments have been really positive, you know, and um, yeah, I, I, I think you're liking it. But either way, I can't, it's like I can't help it. I'm just doing what I enjoy and it's this at the minute. Might all change in a month's time. <laughs> no, right. Anyway, welcome back, Wainwright number 14. I've started this one in a town called Seathwaite, um, just at the sort of, what would you say, like the southern end of the Borrowdale Valley. And um, it is the wettest town in the whole of England, which I think is a pretty cool little fact, uh, because the Lake District, Lake District is very wet at the best of times. And to have that title, the wettest town, whew, you must get a bit of rainfall. Um, so, I'm going up the fell, uh, I'm going up the town's namesake, Seathwaite Fell, doesn't make sense. This one here, see the one lit up? Um, it doesn't look too bad, I think it's going to be a wonderful little trek up. There's a couple of towns that I might stop by. And yeah, like we're getting up towards like Great Gable and some of the bigger fells, so I'm expecting really nice views to be honest. Um, so, let's go and find out, come with me. bit of progress and um, I just wanted to stop here to talk you through um, the route a little bit so the fell that my head is covering is Seathwaite Fell that's the one that I'm headed up now I'm gonna go up in this direction there's two different ways that you can get up basically you have to um, summit the fell from the opposite side from what we can see now you can either go around this way or this way where you can see that waterfall on your right hand side um, I think this side is probably gonna be a little bit better um, the only reason I'm going to miss it this time is because I want to save it up to some of the other nearby Wainwrights. Um, I did something similar when, it, when I went up Greyfriar and um, you know eventually I'm going to be back here coming up some of these fells. They're all close together um, so I want to try and avoid going up the same routes as much as possible you know. But this is going to be just as nice and of course as always we'll make the best of it. <music> Um, weirdly, I've just set this up now, right, and the light changed completely. It went horrible, proper flat. The sun went behind a cloud, and I was about to give it up. But it's come back out now, and what what was really nice, right, off in the background is we had this nice kiss of light on the right hand side of Seathwaite Fell, and it's back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take the shot. Um, so you can probably see what I'm doing here, guys. Really simple. Cascades in the foreground. Seatweight fell in the background with a nice bit of light on his right hand side. I've got the wide angle lens on at 11 mil. I've got my Nissi polarizer filter on the front and um, I don't need a neutral density filter on to get the desired shutter speed for this moving water. Um, just with the polarizer is fine. So I'm taking it at F11, ISO 100 and around about one sixth of a second which is working perfectly for this particular cascade here. Um, since I last spoke to you, I haven't really come that far and it's something that I'm trying to change actually. Um, I feel like when I'm out on hikes in general, I'm just mad to get to the top and it's definitely um, 
a reflection of my personality. I've just, I'm quite excitable. I'm just, you know, buzzing to get to the top because that's where the gold is a lot of the time. Um, but I think it can be a little bit of a disservice to the photography in a way, you know. There's always so many wonderful opportunities en route to the summit, if not better in a lot of cases, you know. So I'm just trying to relax a little bit. So if this photograph gives me that, then it's a positive. Um, so yeah, nice and simple. Don't need to expose your blendness or anything. I thought I might have had to at the start, but it's gonna be a nice little pleasant first photograph. And I like the fact that we're photographing the fell that we're going up. That's always good. far from a tarn called Sprinkling Tarn, probably another 10 minutes and that's where we start the final ascent up to Seathwaite Fell. Now this one here is called Stiehead Tarn and I just want to grab a quick photograph with the telephoto lens with the 55 to 300 and this follows on nicely from what I was talking about in my last video, how priceless this lens is for me. So this scene in general that you can see behind me is um, fairly uninteresting to include in a photograph um, you know if I was going to shoot it wide it wouldn't really do it for me but this tiny little section here I'll draw a little box up on the screen that's what I've noticed that you know when I'm walking around I'm thinking in terms of like 55 to 300 <laughs> and I'm boxing little areas I was like oh I could get a little photograph there and that looks gorgeous we've got blank blend Catara right off in the background lit up by the evening sun he is glowing miles away past Derwent water past keswick he looks stunning um, and then when we zoom in i'm at about 150 mil he fills the frame you know off in the background then we've got this section of crags um over on this side here around about there which is just seathwaite fell actually that falls down from the summit and i'm getting a little bit of the reflections of stiehead time and all in all it's just a really nice um, telephoto photograph, you know, and I think it's made by the glow that we've got on Blaine Cattery in the background. Sweet! <laughs> So I'm just rushing around a little bit, flapping to be honest. Let's, let's just get it out there. Um, oh, we're just getting some light now up there on Glaramara. Um, and we've got these two unnamed tarns in the foreground. Again, really simple shot, but it's one of them where um, I've been hiking for hours. This is my reward, cliche, but it's so true. So I'm not actually at the summit yet, it's not far. And it's a bit of a weird one, Seathwaite Fell because the, the summit of the mountain isn't actually the highest point. Wainwright says it, he says it's generally accepted as the summit of the fell and it's at the northern edge, but either way, we'll get it in a second. But I'm just trying to take my opportunity with that light there, there, because it might not last. In fact, it's fading now. It was a little bit more vibrant before. Unfortunately, I've already pressed the shutter. But yeah, just, it's dead still up here, guys. It's gorgeous. So these little tarns, these ponds, um, are just like two sheets of glass. It's wonderful. Um, I like, how do I explain this now? In fact, I'm gonna grab a shot now because this works well with what I'm gonna say. Um, it's the colors. Let me just grab this now. 
yeah, the colours are really muted and quiet, you know, like, um, as opposed to, you know, my, my final photograph in my last video of Ullock Pike, it was vibrant, it was intense, we were shooting into the sun. Here it's just nice and calm, you know, it goes well with what I was saying at the start of the video, I'm trying to calm myself down a bit and slow down on the hikes. So, I think the faded light, the less intense light, might work better because it matches well with the colours, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'll see when I get home. Beast. Oh, look at that. A sheep bone. Jesus. So I can safely say, we're at the top by the way, let's give him a touch, yeah, we like this one don't we? I can safely say, this is the best Wainwright I've done so far, this is the best fell I've been up in the Lake District, that's it, this is it, 100%, and I mean that like, I mean that really objectively, let's get somewhere a bit safer. Um, you know, like when I went up Grey Friar, if you've been watching my journey, that was my best one, so that's my second best one now, unofficially. Um, but the conditions were amazing on that day for photography. Today they've been decent as well. Not as good as that day, but just from start to finish, amazing. Way better than I thought. Um, I feel like it's got everything. When you get up to like Stayed Tarn and Sprinkling Tarn, you're proper in the fells, like you're in the mountains and it feels like it. When you're down there where you start in the Borrowdale Valley, it's got that charm that I love, you know. But, you know, you're going past tarns, waterfalls, beautiful little stone bridges, there's Erdwick sheep everywhere. It's a nice paved path most of the way up until you get to the mountains and you come off the pass. So for, for me, that's like a perfect mix of like, you know, um, uh, you, get, you get a bit of a challenge towards the end. We've got views down here into Wasdale, just ridiculous, this view all the way back to Derwentwater and like Skiddor, Blencathra, it's just unreal. We've got like great end behind us here. Great Gable is shrouded in cloud. Yeah, let's do a 360, I never do this. Who is it that does this or used to? First man photography, Adam. He used to love this one, didn't he? I'm not doing it very well. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> look at this, guys. And you can see, look, Borrowdale Valley behind, there's your charm, and then it starts kicking off as we get into there. Oh, epic, epic. <sighs> yeah, this has been the perfect hike. What can I say? Um, We are about 10 or 15 minutes to the sunset. So obviously gonna stick around. Um, and I just wanna enjoy it, I suppose, you know. If I do take any, I don't think I will, to be honest. That the, You know, the sun, it's about now when the sun dips down below the mountains. Obviously, it's still above the horizon, but you kind of lose it on the tops of the mountains. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If I take anything, I'll put it up. But, oh, Wayne Wright number 14. Living the dream, really am. Right, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this one as much as I have, because this has been straight out the top drawer and uh, as always please thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you haven't already or if you're new and uh, there's plenty more to come cheers guys and i'll see you on the next adventure out <laughs>